God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. O oh God, you know my foolishness and my sins are not hidden from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let not the flood overwhelm me, nor the depths swallow me up. Let not the pit shut its mouth upon me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Hear me, O Lord, as your loving kindness is good. Turn to me as your compassion is great. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, a confession from me. I'm a, apologies for the lack of sound. I have two different ways of having a microphone on, and I've picked the wrong one. And so, as we go forward, so I've thought it an opportunity for us to share in a psalm together. The words in yellow here are the refrain, and we will say those together as we just go through. The words of one of those songs from the Bible, one of the hymns in there, but we'll just say these together. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Blessed be the Lord. I bless the Lord at all times. God's praise is always on my lips. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us praise God's name. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Blessed be the Lord. I sought the Lord and was heard from all my terrors set free. When the poor cry out, the Lord hears them and rescues them from all their distress. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, those whose spirit is crushed, God will save. Many are the trials of the upright, but the Lord will come to rescue them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, blessed be the Lord. And now some readings from the Bible. I've seen some messages about the sound. It would be useful if someone who is watching live could just message to say that you can hear me or not. Our first reading is from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, a familiar reading about dry bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. 
I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a reading from the Gospel according to John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for the Lord's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village and was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. 
Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Lord, just take these few words of reflection and through your spirit, bring them to life. In Jesus' name, Amen. So we're moving into Passion Tide, moving towards Palm Sunday, Holy Week, Easter. A journey to Jerusalem, to the cross, to resurrection and all that that promises us. And yet here I am, sat in my study sat at home and what odd times the, these are and in the midst of those odd and challenging times we read of dry bones of spirit of prophecy we read of restoration of life hearing of bones covered in flesh and sinew and given breath and we hear of Lazarus raised from the dead after four days in the tomb you may be mourning this morning the loss of familiar Sunday patterns, familiar Sunday locations, the surroundings and comfort of a church building. Alternatively, you may be enjoying the changed ways of doing church and all the different stuff we're trying to do. And it may even excite you in the midst of all of this challenge and everything that's going on, that what might this different approach mean beyond coronavirus? So our readings might be of excitement, uh, our feelings might be of excitement, they might be of real loss and mourning. But whatever the emotions are today, what we have at the core of our being is the hope, the hope that is embodied in those readings today. That hope that is grown through the life-giving spirit, that infilling, indwelling spirit in each of us. The Holy Spirit there, blowing where it will, but filling us with the presence of God and empowering us to live out our faith. And living in the hope of resurrection. That truth that this life is not all there is, that there is eternity to be enjoyed. And it's holding on to that hope that I think is so essential, so important at the moment. This hope that brings peace, that brings a peace and a freedom from fear that is extraordinary, that's beyond the normal. The peace beyond understanding that Jesus spoke about. Our churches are shut at the moment, but this is not out of fear of COVID-19. The churches are shut at the moment so that we are good ambassadors of the need not to gather in places. That's why we're out doing stuff like this. The church is still here. The church is working. The church is still here. But we want to support our national leaders in all that they are trying to do to preserve people's lives and to protect our NHS from a massive surge and an unmanageable surge in cases of COVID-19. That's why the churches are shut. But even though our buildings are shut, even though we can't gather to share peace face to face, even though we can't gather to share communion one with another at the moment, still we have this hope and we have the assurance and the confidence that Jesus gives us. And so I suppose what I say is as we go forwards, I spoke in my first sermon, in fact the only sermon I've had a chance to preach since licensing in the churches of St. James and All Saints, 
I spoke about our worship, about our discipleship, about our service. And I just ask that we try and hold our confidence. And in fact, we rest in the spirit for confidence in the promise that Passion Tide moves us towards. As we live, as we pray, as we serve wherever possible, we do this in the continued light of a gospel of truth, a gospel of hope, a gospel that is truly good news. And that's what this season is all about. And that gospel that is filled with love, with hope and with faith. So wherever we get the opportunity to live out those qualities of love, hope and faith in these challenging times of isolation, of being separated, of distancing one from another. Well, then it's through the spirit that there is real life breathed into what all of this is about. And so, Lord, just send your spirit on us again to minister wherever we are and whatever our circumstances are at the moment. And I've sent, I've invited a couple of people, but I send a wider invitation here. Send me a 30 second video, a 30 second selfie video of what faith means to you in this. Only send it if you're happy for me to share it on social media. But it'd be really good if we can share what this love, hope and faith means to us in the midst of something that is so world changing as the circumstances around coronavirus and COVID-19. So I'd love to receive those. You can either email them or um, message them. You know, get them to me somehow. And uh, we will publish them over time through Facebook and through our YouTube channel. But just live out love, hope and faith today and this week. Amen. So let's take an opportunity together to just, in a short statement, say our faith. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. And now we come to a time of prayer together. Starting with the collect, that special prayer for this Sunday. Gracious Father, who gave up your Son out of love for the world, lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now some prayers for this Passion Tide. And the response to let us pray to the Lord is, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. For Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, particularly at this time where that is so prevalent, that they may find support and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who, weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who through their service suffer from fear, exhaustion, and woes too much to bear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And that we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And just a moment of stillness, of quiet, for you to offer your own prayers for those you love, for those you know who are impacted by the current situation or, or just anyone of need, anyone in despair. And Lord, we hold before you all those places of conflict that have dropped off our news channels at the moment, but we remember them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. join our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so as we come to the end of this uh, short service together, again my apologies for not having the microphone on at the start. Uh, I'll do better next time as I grow used to the technology. But we'll just come for a closing prayer to say together, and then I will close with a blessing. Keep us, Father, in this community of faith, though we are separated by circumstances, the church of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to confess him as Messiah and Lord in all we say and do. We ask this in his name. Amen. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times. The Lord be with you all. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest on you and those you love, now and always. Amen. And just as we come to the end of this time together, uh, yesterday I was, I, I just love the song, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And so I offer you that. The words will be on the screen. If you may feel a bit odd, but if you are, you do want to join in singing with it, then do. This was just something I recorded yesterday afternoon as a bit of an experiment, but I hope it blesses you. Go well, stay well, keep safe, stay indoors. And I hope we get together very soon.